I actually found as I was looking back through this this morning that I think showing you the opposites is going to mess this up more than it's going to help it. So I'm actually whoop, on page 15 of the notes here, actually going to start in with the regular stuff so we can see, all right, what are we dealing with today? How's this going to work? And go from there. So solving equations with variables under a radical. Isolate the radical. Okay, this is comparable to when we were doing absolute value equations. We had to make sure the absolute value was on a side by itself before we started. Because if we didn't, one of our answers was going to be wrong. Well, you're going to end up in a really bad algebra situation if you don't. So we want to make sure there's only a radical or at least one radical on each side when we can avoid it. So, to eliminate the radical, we raise it to each side of a power equal to the index. So if it's a square root, we square both sides. If it's a cube root, we cube both sides. I gotta pay particular attention to that. Solve what's left. Now, here's where I'm different. Check your solution to the original to make sure you've not obtained any extraneous roots. Okay, so here's, here's my opinion on that. Most of the time, they're going to be fine if you've done your math right. However, I'm going to update this slightly. I would check numbers that make your radical negative. So, like, if you get an answer and it's negative 3, and you're kind of looking at the original problem, you're like, ooh, wait a minute. If I stick negative 3 into the radical, I think that's going to make it negative. We can't do the square root of a negative. So that's kind of more of the check I think you need to do. I don't think you need to physically plug numbers in and check every single answer. Just my opinion. Just my opinion. So in the examples that we've got down here below, we are going to deal with a couple of different things that can occur. So as I kind of bump this up a little bit, we're hoping for the ones on the left, okay? The ones on the left, you've got your equation. You notice we add the four, we divide by two. The whole goal is this has got to be alone before you square both sides. Once you square both sides, the radical is gone. You find your answer, you go about your business. The trickier of the two, happens only occasionally is when you're rolling through and you're like well wait now there's radicals on both sides how am I supposed to get this by itself because if I add it over there well now it's stuck on this side this time I can't so what ends up having to be done is something that's not as much fun and that's going to be when you go to square both sides because you literally can't isolate anymore over here it cancels. Okay, where's all this coming from? So if I square this, that does not, let me use a different color, that's not good on pink. That doesn't mean I just get to distribute the squared. I literally have to foil this out. So I'm going to let you kind of see how this works. When I do the first, the radicals cancel. Okay, that's just plain old 5x. Then I go to the outside. I got a negative square root of 5x. I do my inner a negative square root of 5x. And a last, which is plus 1. My like terms are together in the middle. And this is where what you see here is coming from. I had to foil it out. We try to avoid it. But occasionally, we're not going to be able to. And so if that happens, we're going to actually have to play the squaring game twice. Because once I get the 5x and the 1 moved around, because you kind of look, you're like, OK, Hardy, what were you doing here? If I want this to be positive, I could subtract this over. I'll literally show you. 
because sometimes it's great to see examples and other times you look at the example and you're like, how the heck would you do that stuff? So if I minus the 5x over, if I minus the 1 over, well, that's just going to cancel. I don't like that being negative, so I'm just going to divide both sides by negative 1. That's where the step has come from. And so then you're going to have to square both sides again once you simplify. Divide by 2. Now you can square root both sides. Oh my gosh, we even got a factor. What the heck? Again, I'm going to put a star on this. This is rare, but again, I'm not going to say it'll never happen. That's why we've got an example of it here. A super majority of what we're going to do is going to be like the first one and what we're going to take a look at in most of the examples today. So now that I hopefully haven't completely scared you off, I hope not. Okay, solve the radical by using algebra. Check your equations. Okay. Radical's already by itself. Nice. So since the radical is already by itself, my pen does not want to cooperate. There we go. Squared and square root cancel. 5 squared is 5 times 5, which is 25. Not 10, so be careful. And now it's just regular Algebra 1 equation. Subtract your 3. Divide. Take a quick peek. If I plug in 11, is it going to make it a negative radical? No. Then you're probably about 99.99% .99 sure you're okay. And go on to the next problem. Unless you really, really want to plug it in to make sure. And so the one thing you do have to watch for, though, is that you're not going to square every time. If I have a fractional exponent, okay, we're going to take the reciprocal power. So here, if this is 1 over 5, this is 5 over 1 or 5. Because 1 fifth and 5 are inverses and cancel. 3 to the 5th power, okay. And I'll be honest, if the whole exponent power you don't like, if you want to rewrite it like this, so you'd be able to go in and do the 5 and be able to make it look more like that did, that's fine too. It, again, it just depends on what clicks best with you in your head. That's going to go in evenly. Wait. Yeah, that's right. No, wait. I don't trust myself now. Yeah, that's right. I don't know why I didn't trust myself on that. Positive. That's going in positive. Yeah, we're fine. And get that in there. But this is going to be detail stuff, which has been a little bit of an issue so far, but we're going to keep working at it. Here, don't go cube on both sides already. Ooh, that'd be a mess. So I look. Isolated, watch for your root. And even though all of these have come out nice so far, nice meaning no fractions, no decimal, things like that, it doesn't mean that sometimes you won't get a fraction. Okay? So don't think automatically if I get a fraction it's wrong. Doesn't necessarily mean that. It just means, meh, let me double check and make sure that, that things are going okay still. So you're like, okay, Hardy, this hasn't been terrible so far. So far, Hardy. 
Okay. Ooh. Double radical. Is this going to be like that second one we were looking at on the other side? No. No, it is not. Because if we get to one radical per side, that's okay too. And it's not going to be the big foil out thing that we had to deal with on that example because... If I look at this, and I'm like, okay, so I square both sides. Oh, the radicals are just going to go away. That's kind of cool. And now I can just solve what's left. Add my 4 over and divide by 5. Okay, not, not terribly bad. And a lot of this mainly is going to come down to just, am I making sure those little things are getting done? Like here, you're like, okay, well, that's just like this one. This is going to be easy. But I'll tell you what happens. Because I can't completely isolate this radical. If I divide the two, it's just coming over here anyway. So when I go to square both sides, over here, okay, everything just cancels. That's cool. Over here, that 2 isn't under a radical. That squared is going to the 2 and to the radical right here. So I've got to remember to square the 2 because it's not canceling with anything. But when I get to the radical part, that does cancel. But that 4 that's left is still got to go to the x and the 11, not just 4x. So there's a couple of spots there that you can get the hard part right. But if you're not careful, it kind of messes other things up. So let's see, 3x, negative 42, x squared, negative 42. Uh -oh. uh, 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 uh. Red light alert. You see that negative come up. Now we want to double check. Because I start to look and I'm like, wait, if I plug it in there, negative 14 plus 11 is negative 3. I can't take the square root of a negative number. That's not defined. That doesn't work. So this time we've got no solution. Now, is it possible if you get a positive then it could still be no solution. Yes, if it causes your radical to become negative. So you do have to watch it a little bit on problems, but again, just a quick value check. Is it negative? Nope, I'm good. Okay, and go from there. And so all this other stuff that's going on, I'm going to bop around a little bit here now. Ooh, fractional exponents that aren't just one on top. Okay, before you do that, get that three out of there. Just use the reciprocal. So if that's the four-thirds power, we're going to take both sides to the three-fourths. Because if you multiply a number by its reciprocal, it cancels. And that, just let the calculator do the heavy lifting. 81 to the 3 fourths is 27. And I go. So don't let simple stuff mess things up. Now here again, the feelers, but let's see if the feelers are right this time. Isolate this. We're going to minus the 6. I don't know. Cube both sides. X is negative 125. Uh-oh, negative. Let's play again. Now, at first glance, you might look and go, oh, ne yeah, negative. Take a rep. No solution. Wait a minute, though. That's not an odd root. We've had this discussion. 
if okay if it's an odd root three five maybe okay you can get negatives out of there because if you take negative five to the third power it's a negative 125. So before you see, oh, it's a negative, it doesn't work, pay attention to your index. Because if it's odd, you can take that negative and you're going to be okay. So be cautious when it comes to stuff like that. Oh, let's see here. We've chatted about that. We've chatted about that. Ooh, that doesn't look like any fun. Let's do this. So I look here. And I go, okay, we've got to get this alone. Before you go through and multiply this whole thing by two-fifths, if you do that first, this four also has to be multiplied by two-fifths. So since I think many of you would not think of that, if you do that, if there's plus or minus work to do at the start, Get that situated first. Then we're going to deal with this. And to my people out there that want to write on their paper, divide by five halves. If you don't know that divide by five halves and multiply by two fifths is the same thing, don't divide by five halves because it's going to get messed things up. Just multiply by the reciprocal. It does the exact same thing and we're not going to mess stuff up. Uh, 20 divided by 5 is 4. Now it's normal. Okay? It took me a couple of steps. But it's normal. And now it's little stuff. Remembering our square, get it right. get my value, go about my business. Okay. So any time, and I'm just going to put one note in here on number 10, in case you're looking later and you're like, why didn't he do that? Because it's just like number five, once you add the three square root of two X to the other side, same thing. You're going to have to deal with the coefficient. You just got to make sure you multiply it through. And I'm finding with a lot of you, the more time I'm giving you in class to play, the more I'm getting from you. So I'm, tr I'm trying to pick and choose here when I'm doing with these, which ones we need to do. So on the bottom, and this is just the heads up, you're going to start seeing more quiz questions that are things like this. What is this? What's the first step in this? Describe how to do this. Just to get you thinking a little bit with stuff. So like for instance, what's an extraneous solution? Okay, like number five was up there. There's so many ways you can write this. The way I like to look at it is, I did the math right. But the answer still doesn't work. Because we can't just say it happens in a negative situation. We can't say it just happens if the square root is negative. Because this is a much more general question. And so it's just a solution, you know, mathematically, just not cutting it for us. So think that through. We've done several questions on quizzes, like number 14. So I'm going to do number 13, and I'm going to get out of the way, besides doing the one question from yesterday, as I said that I would. So, Marcy, let's see here. So we got x to the 2 thirds equals 5. Okay. Marcy began by cubing each side. Okay. So if she cubed each side. Now, that doesn't completely wipe this exponent out. It just wipes the threes out. Leaves me with x squared equals 125. This is where I like to actually write the step the person did out. Now I look at this and I say, okay, if that was the question, what's your next step? Yeah, just square root. 
So we're going to square root both sides. Okay, that's, what would her next step be? Okay, what could she have done to solve the equation in one step? And it's going to seem like it's repetitive. You're like, why can't I just say, take it to the 3 halves power? Okay, because if I said that, so you're telling me I can just take the left side. You're like, well, no. I don't know if any of you have ever, I don't remember what class it was, but earlier where they're like, okay, I want you to write down how to make a peanut butter sandwich. And people always write, put some peanut butter on bread, put slices together, you're done. And they're like, well, where'd you get the peanut butter from? Well, out of the cabinet, you didn't tell me. You didn't tell me I had to open the lid. I want you to be really specific, is what I'm saying. So anything you would have to do, both sides of an equation, if it's to do with algebra and things like that, be specific so a little kid could follow your directions. Okay? So, like I was saying, we're finally to the new practice here. Now, was I smart enough to bring the new practice with me up here? No, I did not grab a new practice. It's pages one and two on the new practice. Um, I will say, like I said before, but some of you got to quit hearing me say, well, okay, I just have to do the odds because those are the answers. No, you need to do enough that when you go to do it on your own during a quiz, you're not screwing it up. For some of you, that may be the odds. For some of you, that may be every single one. I don't know. You probably do, though. So, again, the key is up here for that. So you can see where we're heading as far as that goes. Now, for a moment here, I'm going to rewind the clock and go back to yesterday because I have now had three questions come to me about number six in the practice yesterday. So I'm trying to find, do I want a clear sheet to mess with? Yes, I do. I need a clean one. So let me grab a clean version of that worksheet. Just one moment. And I will get that up there. But of course, my clean one of those is not here, so I'll grab one from the back. Did I stop this? No. Okay. 